Hey everybody, welcome to Church Online and thank you for joining us. Uh, this is part nine of a series that we call Going Public. And I'm telling you, we've been, uh, what is this, nine or 10 weeks um, in quarantine and isolation and social distancing. Um, and so I just, I just been praying for you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I hope your family's doing great. And um, I just believe we got a word today. But before we jump into that, uh, I want to say happy Mother's Day to every mom that's out there right now. Um, and just the way that you love and you care, you mentor and you pour your life out um, into the people that you love. I want to say thank you. Thank you on behalf of Grow Life Church. Thank you to every mom that represents Grow Life Church. And um, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a mama's boy. Uh, so I love this day. I love my mom. So shout out to Esther Engelhop, this guy's mom. Shout out to her for Mother's Day. Love you. And um, I got to say happy Mother's Day to my beautiful wife, uh, who's probably looking at me right now on the couch going, dude, come on. Um, but happy Mother's Day to every mom. I want to jump into this message today um, just because I don't know about you, but is anybody tired? Uh, if I'm just going to be honest and, and anybody just got to the point where you're like, it's kind of been an exhausting season. So much has changed. So much has reset. So much has um, not been, been what it was. And we're kind of in this weird limbo season of trying to figure out what's next. And um, man, it's just been a tiring season. But one of the things that I've noticed in this season is that when everything went away, it's actually the home that everyone would retreat to. It's the home. And I don't know what your home is, and I'm not referring to a house, I'm referring to the home. I don't know what your home is. Um, but this season, I've just been learning more now than ever that when the swim lessons get canceled and, and the zoo visits are done, and uh, the hanging out with friends has come to a standstill, man, we really got back to the basics of th this is it. Like the most meaningful things in my life, the things that have the most faithfulness, the most fruitfulness, like the most important values are right here. It's, it's, it's this home. And you might be single and you might be realizing, hey, man, the, the, these friends or these family members, are that's my home. You, you might be married and going, man, we're, I'm, I'm learning that there's some things where well, I didn't know existed in our marriage until we've been quarantined together for 10 weeks. You might be figuring out that there's some things about our kids that we're learning in this season going, I didn't know. I didn't know that this is what it was like. And, <clears throat> and so I want to read kind of the, the guiding scripture for today, which is Joshua 24 and If you don't know Joshua's story, just a quick throwback on him. Um, he, was, he was a young guy. He served Moses, which was the leader of Israel, faithfully. Um, he, was on, he was on his hip. And so he would serve him. He would make sure that Moses, as the leader of Israel, had everything he needed. He was a servant to Moses. He, um, at times, was a spy that would go out and check out the promised land and report back to Moses and go, man, we can do this. He was one of two spies that actually believed that God would deliver the land into their hands. He was, he was a, a warrior. He was the leader of Israel once Moses passed away and just fought valiantly and conquered land. And he's actually the, the, the general. He's the leader. He's the one that led Israel into the promise. He's the one that was able to walk them into the promised land. He is, is the leader that enabled them to have the inheritance that so many of them had heard about from their forefathers. And um, just an exceptional leader, an exceptional warrior. And in Joshua 24, we're, we're getting towards the end of his life. But this is what it says. It says, now therefore, this is Joshua speaking, fear the Lord and serve him. Fear the Lord, serve him with sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. If you find it evil in your eyes 
to serve the Lord, then choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your past in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in the land that we currently dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, anybody else just hear a brave heart moment right here? You know, as for me and my house, it's just like there's this, this warrior statement He's saying, hey, hey, I'm drawing a line in the sand for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. You can choose what you want to choose. You can, hey, we got gods that our ancestors used to follow. We got gods that people are following in our neighborhood called the Amorites. But I'm telling you right now, I have made the decision. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I just think that that's a powerful statement, declaration. But above all that, it's a powerful conviction. It's a belief. It's, a, it's, it's something inside of us that says, man, nothing is going to shake from this truth. And um, I titled the message today, Public School. Public School. So if you're taking notes, you can write that down. And uh, we're going to jump in. Let's pray. Actually, before we pray, you should put in the chat right now what public school you went to whether it was here in Florida or another state, write what public school, write your public high school uh, and maybe your favorite teacher. Shout out to your favorite teacher. Tag them. Maybe they'll see this and uh, it'll be awesome. So let's pray. God, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for your word. Thank you for this day. Um, thank you for this day that we get to celebrate motherhood. We get to celebrate moms. We get to celebrate um, just so many people that are rock stars and heroes on our planet. Um, that are caring, that are empathetic, that, are, that have just built up um, their kids, that have built up uh, in mentor relationships. And God, I'm so grateful uh, for all the moms that we have that are pouring their life into this next generation. Uh, Lord, I just pray uh, that there would be a special blessing for every mom today. Uh, but God, I pray that we'd have ears to hear your word this morning. I pray that um, we'd be able to, to lean in to what you want to share. And God, just some simple truths that you've placed on my heart just to pastor our church and to care for our, our city. So help us to do that well today. Speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, um, public school, public school taught me um, quite a bit. So the message is public school. And I just want to talk about a couple things. Shout out to anybody that was homeschooled. Uh, but I also want to shout out in the middle of, uh, this is the end, but Teacher Appreciation Week is also this past week. And so come on, let's tag teachers and shout out to every teacher in the chat right now. Um, but I, I just want to say shout out to every public school teacher. You do not have an easy job. Uh, you do not have a high paying job, but you do it because you love this generation. You love students. You love to be able to develop and to disciple and to raise up people. And um, I don't know if you can hear it, but we got some lawn people out my front right now. Hey, man, good to see you. And uh, cool. We're going we to rock with it. So, but hey, shout out to every teacher. Shout out to um, just what you do. And thank you. For, thank you for pouring your life into this next generation and into these students. And I got to tell you, it is no easy task. This is a TikTok generation. And I don't really get it. I, I, I went on TikTok. We're preparing for camp. This has nothing to do with the message. But I'm, I'm on TikTok going, I, I don't get it. What, what is this? So, hey, any, any uh, Gen Z um, that's in the chat right now, help us get it. All right. Just put it in the chat. Be like, this is how you get it. This is what TikTok is. Um, but growing up, looking back at my public school days, um, I got to say, I learned a lot of things that have helped me get an education, but I learned a lot of things that I've never used a day in my life, right? There's just things that we learned for the next milestone, for the next testing. And um, at the end of the day, I, I got a great education, but public school could not teach me everything that I needed to learn to become who I am. And um, public school could not teach me humility. I learned how to respond in pride and, and, and be able to yell at some people. I learned some anger through public school, but I, I, public school can't teach you humility. Public school cannot teach you how to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Like those are not things that I learned through public school. Those were things that I learned at my home. 
Those were things that I learned when my mom was praying, when my mom was getting us together and sharing something that was on her heart and what she felt like God was saying to her. And uh, man, I just, I, just, I just believe as we walk through this season where we're quarantined and we're in the home, I think that there's this unique perspective of what God is doing right now. And he's realigning, realigning his church and his purpose with discipleship in the home. One of the most beautiful things that I love right now um, that I've just learned in this season is, is seeing the amount of parents that are now discipling their kids at home. They're, they're, they're getting resourced by the church and by church leaders and shout out to every Little Life Surf team member and every Kids Life Surf team member. Man, they've, they're, they're being resourced with material to be able to help their student grow in their relationship with God. And here's the beautiful thing about that, because at the end of the day, if we're not careful, we can kind of have this drop off mentality with our faith. And it's and it's because there's nothing wrong with it. But this is our culture. Like, this is what we do. Like, I, I cannot teach my kid calculus. So I drop him off at school so that he can learn everything he needs to learn to be able to go to where he needs to go. I, I I'm, I'm not equipped to do that. So we've learned in our culture to outsource skill sets that we don't have so that our kids or our family or our home or people that we know can grow and learn those things. And if we're not careful, we'll allow the culture to dictate the home instead of God's word dictating our home. Because if we actually don't know what this says and we don't lean into this and we, we have no concept of what this is like, we will, we will miss out on the joy that it is to disciple our home. And I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking about parents and kids. I'm talking to the single person that's sitting in the living room watching on a phone that's going, well, who, who is my home? You are your home. You are your home. And we live in a culture, I do it all the time. I, my kids go to swim classes. Really miss swim classes. Um, <laughs> cannot wait, come on somebody to get them back into some swim classes. And uh, they, we go and they have a swim instructor. Like, if, like, like if, if our kids wanna learn piano, we get them an instructor that can teach them how to play piano. If they wanna learn dance, we get them in front of a dancer like that can teach them. And here's, here's the truth, skills can be taught. There's nothing wrong with that. Skills can be taught, but character is made. You can teach a skill but you build character. Character is actually made. And so, and so I, I can outsource swimming and I can outsource um, you know, piano and I can outsource dance, but you know what I can't outsource? The humility that my child's growing up in. I can't outsource a thriving marriage. I can't, I can't outsource, I can go get equipped with some skills on how to make my marriage thrive, but, but my marriage is not made in, in, in a, in a one-time book or in a one-time moment. My marriage is made every single day with the choices that are being made. So what, what does it look like for us to have decisions in this season to be able to go, hey, we might learn some skills, but our character is actually made. And here's, here's the truth that I feel like is going to just guide where we're at today. And, and I kind of just pastor for a second. This is just what I've been praying for and, and, and believing in this, this week. And is that we can't outsource discipleship. We can't. We can't outsource. We, we, we cannot expect our kids to fall in love with God when the only time they hear about Him is the one hour on Sunday when they get dropped off at church in their service. That's a great addition. That's a great ministry. That's a great opportunity. That's a great community. That's why church is there. That's what we're built for. But I cannot expect them to fall in love with Jesus because they spent one hour on a Sunday hearing a message and doing some worship songs. Like discipleship has to be caught, not, not just taught. And so we're, we're not just going to teach skills. We're going we're gonna to grab a hold of this thing and Man, Ephesians 4 talks about equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And 
I just wanted to talk to the season we're in. We're going to jump into Matthew 13 here in a second. But in the season that we're in, we're in a season where the church is equipping people to develop their kids and to develop their marriage and to develop um, their life as, 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 as a single person, to develop your home and what that looks like for you to develop family. I mean, we're, we're here to help to equip the saints for the work of the ministry to go public with your faith, to go public with your family. And so here's, here's the truth I want to talk about today. I cannot rely on the public, on this world, the patterns of this world, the thinkings of this world. I cannot rely on the public to school this next generation on how to follow God. Like as a church, we cannot rely on the public to school our generation in what it means to follow God. We have to grab it back. There's a decision that has to be made. That's going to go, hey, my largest influence is going to be my kids. My largest influence and voice that I want to have when I'm old and gray and dying. I want to have the largest influence and voice in my wife's life. I want to have the largest influence and voice in my kids. They're sleeping upstairs in my kids' life. So I cannot rely on the public to school this next generation in following God. And here's, here's just some simple things. Not a ton today. Um, that quarantine has taught me. Can we talk about this for a second? And the first one is that it's the hardest at home. Any, anybody, anybody like, why? Why? It just feels, it's just the hardest at home. And in Matthew chapter 13, verse, verse 53, Jesus actually experiences this. Come on, somebody. You know, Jesus went through it. We're probably going to go through it. So, it says, when Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there and coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue and they were amazed. I said, where did this man get this wisdom, these miraculous powers? Where isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't isn't his mother Mary? Like, aren't his brothers James and Joseph, Simon and, and Judas? Like, aren't all his sisters with us? Like, when did this man get all of these things? And it says that in verse 57, it's one of the saddest moments. And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Come on, somebody. Somebody's, somebody's looking around the living room. That's like, that's right. You need to have faith. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm talking about the fact that it is just the hardest at home. Jesus says that, or in this passage, it says that they took offense at Jesus because they were so familiar with Jesus. Here's the thing. It's easier to get offended at what's familiar. It's easier to get offended at what's familiar. And here's, here, here's the thing I've learned in, in quarantine is that, um, there's this perception of just going, well, that's just my brother. Like, that's just my sister. That's, that's just my wife. That's just my... And what happens is we get so familiar with the way somebody is and with their giftedness and the way that they talk and the way that they are and the personality that they have. Isn't it funny that when you were dating, he was hilarious? But now that you've been, you've been married a couple years, it's like, he ain't that funny. It, 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 nothing changed except it got familiar. Like, isn't it crazy? Like when, 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 when you have a kid for the first time or you, or you buy your house for this first time and you walk into the home and you're like, this is, this is amazing, right? You, you, you might be, I'm going to fell out of the chair. You, you might be single right now going like, man, I, I remember when I bought this house and like, man, everything was spick and span and clean and looked good. And you're walking around and after a while, it's just like, yeah, that's, that's just where I throw my clothes and that's just the TV and that's just the busted dish that I've had from when I bought this house five years ago. Like, like the familiar starts to, starts to taint these things that are beautiful and gifts. And what happened is these people couldn't recognize the savior of the world because they were familiar with him already. And they took an offense at him because he was teaching things 
that he should not have had or known or been able to grab a hold of because I know where you come from. I know who your mom is. Like, I don't know if I believe what you're saying because it's just too familiar. Here's, here's what happens when, when, when familiar starts to hurt belief. Where there's a lack of belief, there's a lack of miracles. Jesus says it right here. They did not do many miracles. Not that he could not, he did not. Because of their lack of faith. Man, I, just being able to go to work or being able to go to this place, like sometimes like we're all a hero in somebody's arena. Like some of you, you, you might be just great at your job. And your boss is constantly talking about how amazing you are at your job and how great and how, how, how effective you've been. And we couldn't do this thing without you. And there's this sense of a fan base of being celebrated that just kind of feels good if you're a words of affirmation person. And you're like, man, I, I just feel like I'm really good at something. And then we take that away because we get quarantined and we get put in the house and there's a kid crying. And you got to run and go do this thing. And there's no boss coming around saying, hey, you're doing a fantastic job. They're calling you going, hey, we have a meeting at this time. And why we're and things start getting all kind of messed up and reset. And in that moment, we start getting confused because here's here's what I know. So many of us have fans that can celebrate us, but our family knows us. Our family knows us. They get to see every part. They get to see, they get to see the good days. They get to see the bad days. They get to see when you rock in quarantine hair and it's a mess. They get to see your Mother's Day edition. Shout out to Mother's Day again. Uh, MLB hat, like they, 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 they get to see the ins and the outs. They get to see when, when you're rocking your best fit and going out for a date night or you rocking pajamas all day for the last 10 weeks. Like they get to see everything. Here's the thing about familiarity with family. Family gets to see who we are, not just what we portray. They get to see who we are not just what we portray. And it's actually, it's actually in these moments when we're home and we're looking around, whatever your house looks like, and we go, let's get back to the basics for a second. Like, let's, let's forget everything, all the titles and all accomplishments and all those things that may make you who you are. Let's scrap all of that for a second and go, when all of that gets stripped away, when the finances are uncertain, when the job isn't a place you go to anymore, when at the end of the day, you're sitting with whoever is your home. Like the thing I've learned in quarantine is that it's probably the hardest at home because they see my, my greatest moments and my worst failures. Nobody is celebrating me. Nobody has me on a pedestal. Nobody thinks that I'm a hero. And my sons are still three in one. So like, I'm like, all in all, you know, they're just like, whoa, they're, I'm, I'm enjoying every second of this season. But like, they, they don't care if I preach the greatest message or the worst message of the day. They're just happy to see me. Like at the end of the day, what, what we were accomplishing fades away and quarantine has forced us to face the reality of the health in our home. Quarantine has, has forced us to to maybe see some things we didn't see before. And I'm telling you, this is a gift that we've been given. Man, I didn't realize my kid was struggling there. Man, I, I didn't realize that I'm single sitting in my home, but I, I've been struggling with feeling alone. I've been struggling with loneliness. I've been struggling. Man, I didn't realize that when so-and-so passed the other, uh, a couple years ago, that I never took some time to grieve and It's the hardest at home. And man, I just think that we have an opportunity in this season to go, you know what? I'm not going to allow the public to dictate my identity, the public. I'm not going to get schooled by those people. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take this next couple weeks, however long we're still going to be in this season, and go, God, what are you trying to teach me in this moment? What has become so familiar I've forgotten that it's a gift? What has become so ignored that I've forgotten it's starting to grow. And maybe I need to grieve. Maybe I need to pay attention to something. I think, I think for some of us, 
It's the hardest at home for Joshua. He says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here's the second thing I've, I've been learning. My house starts with me. I think that there's an order of importance. And Joshua says it. He says, man, as for me and my house. And I don't mean me because I'm the male or because I'm the, I'm the husband or because I'm the dad. I mean me as in you. Me. The mom. The kid. The son. The daughter. It don't matter who. I just mean my house starts with me. And here's something else I've been learning in quarantine. When our habits get disrupted... It starts changing the flow of our entire life. And I saw this quote online, and I have no idea who, who to give this to. But it, it basically says this. Choices become actions. Actions become habits. And habits become your way of life. And can I just say that this quarantine is a gift to reset your way of life. It's just hitting the, it's, it's helping you see things you didn't see. It's helping me notice things that I didn't notice. It's helping me realize that my house starts with me. That maybe the unhealthy areas that I'm noticing starts with me going, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, maybe we just been so busy and maybe, maybe this season, maybe this next season, we're going to figure out how to do rhythms of rest so that it's not all about everything that's going on out in the public school, but what's happening right here in the private home. Like, man, maybe, maybe we've done a great job of developing leaders and, 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 and doing life groups with all these other people out here. But man, what, what would that look like to bring prayer into my home with my spouse? Maybe I go to the prayer meeting out of the abundance from the prayer time with my spouse. Maybe I make some different choices in this season that lead to a new way of life in the next season. And here's, here's what I love about Joshua. He makes it so clear. He says, choose whom you will serve. Can I just give you two things that we can do on Mother's Day, leaving this, 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 this message right here in your living room on every tablet. You can throw it in the chat. Say, I'm gonna make a choice. Just put that in the chat right now. I'm gonna make a choice. Here's two things, here's two things that, that we could do that are, that are simple that, that he lays out. He says, hey, choose who you're going to serve. What if in this season we made one choice and we decided one way to serve? And, and it looks like this. Choosing is the mindset. Serving is the action. So the moment I make a choice, I'm creating a mindset. I'm creating an action. Or, or um, I'm creating a mindset. And the moment I go to serve, it's creating an action. And then I love this in verse 14. He says, serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. I think with everything that's going on, with how complicated things have gotten, with how um, crazy all these different options we have. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I go here? Should I not go there? Do we not come out of quarantine? Do we open the business? Do we not open the business? What if we just simplified for a second and just said, you know what? What would it look like for me to have a home that was faithful and sincere? What, what would it look like if my house starts with me, if I was just faithful and sincere? Like, what if I just went to my kids and said, man, I... I Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm sincerely apologizing to you right now. And I know you're three. The other day, my son um, was, was, he was way past bedtime. Shout out to everybody who is rocking the quarantine style going, yeah, it's just way past my kid's bedtime, but I don't even care, right? Uh, it was just past bedtime. You, just, you throw it in the chat, put a hand, wave at me, do something that just like, we with you. And uh, it was just way past bedtime. And so he was, he was grumpy and, oh, I don't want, you know, doing that whole thing. And um, he, he had to go potty before he goes to bed. I never thought I'd be saying potty, but here I am. And uh, he had to go potty 
before he had to go to bed. And, and he wasn't going. He was whining and he was crying. And I had a choice. I could either get upset or I could figure out a way to make him laugh because I knew he was tired. And I made the choice to make him laugh. And I, I went to go run at him and go, yeah, 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 yeah. Like just to, <laughs> that was weird. Just to mess with him. And um, I ran and I made that face. And I scared him so bad because he thought I was mad. Like he thought I was running at him in anger. And he thought, and, and apparently my face like this, it must, must look like how when I get upset. And he, I mean, he just like broke down. He was like, you scared me. And I grabbed him and I hugged him. And I was like, I was just trying to play with you. Like, I'm so sorry. And, 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 and we were just going back and forth. But I, I wanted to make the choice to be able to do the sincere thing. But I grabbed him and I just held him. He's cranky and tired, and I just say, buddy, I'm, I was like, leave me there, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to scare you. I did not, I, I'm not mad at you. I love you, but you need to go potty because you need to go to bed because we way past bedtime. And, but it was just this moment of God reminding me, it's the little moments of sincerity that are going to make a big difference. And so I, I really don't have a, a complicated or really mind-blowing word honestly right now in this moment it's just I want to look at Joshua's advice and when he says hey for me and my house we're going to serve the Lord what does serving the Lord look like it looks like being sincere and being faithful it it what does faithfulness look like in a season where where we're in crisis like I some of us just need to do some breathing exercises in our living rooms for a second and just go you know what I'm just going to stay faithful I'm going to stay faithful to my business. I'm going to stay faithful to my spouse. I'm going to stay faithful to what God has called me to do. I'm going to stay faithful to my friends. I'm going to do phone calls and FaceTimes and Zoom calls. Like, I'm just going to stay faithful. It, it, it may just look like every day showing up and being present with your family. Uncertain of finances, uncertain of business, but just saying, you know what? I'm going to be faithful to my family. I'm going to be sincere. Sincerity looks like being honest and just saying, you know what? I'm kind of freaking out and I need to tell somebody. Sincerity looks like being, hey, I'm worn out. I'm tired. Can I be sincere with you? I'm tired. It's, it, it's been exhausting. But it's been fruitful. It's been hard work. But it's been worth it. What if we're faithful in this season? And I don't want to rely on the public to school this next generation. And I just think on Mother's Day with so many great mentors in and through our church and in and through this world and in through watching online, what an opportunity we have to care for people, to lean into people's life, to make a sincere phone call and say, hey, it's been crazy here at home, but I just want to call and check in on you. Hey, I, 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 hey, I just want to stay, hey, hey boss man, I know it's been crazy. What do you need? Because I want to stay faithful and diligent to my work here and what I'm called to do. What does it look like to be sincere and to be faithful? Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, it's a choice. Joshua said, as for me and my house, he made the choice. He said, hey, me first and then my house. Man, what are some choices you can make in this season that are going to become actions that are going to become habits, that are going to become a new way of life. Joshua, in chapter 24, is sharing these moments. And um, anytime I've ever read Joshua, I always thought of this young guy who, who's battling, who's fighting, who's working. And um, in, in, in this moment, a paragraph later, it says he passed away at 110 years old. So he old. And what I found to be so amazing was Joshua lived so faithful. His life was so fruitful because he was faithful. But he lived so faithful that even in his old age, he's still making a choice in whom he's going to serve. And I just think every day we wake up and we have a choice. Joshua was a faithful person. He was a faithful spy. He was a faithful servant. He was a faithful warrior. He was a faithful leader. But at the end of the day, he was faithful in choosing to follow God. And I just, I just believe that today, if we would be faithful 
in our choice to follow God, that we might have an opportunity to teach somebody else and what that means. Right, right before Joshua says this, the whole first 13 verses, he actually stands up in front of all the people. He gathers everybody in the city called Shechem. And he says, hey, everybody sit down. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And he says, um, it says, this is what the Lord says. Long ago, your father lived beyond the Euphrates. His name was Terah. And he went from generation to generation of Israel's lineage, of their story, of what God had done. He said, Terah traveled with this guy named Abram, and God spoke to Abram. Abraham moved to the promised land, and that promised land, Abraham had sons, and he had Isaac, and Isaac began to have sons, and he had Jacob, and Esau, and Jacob began to have 12 sons, and they went to Egypt, and then God rescued them from Egypt and brought them out of that place, and we landed in the wilderness with Moses for 40 years, but God delivered us because God is faithful and he brought us into the promised land where we conquered land and we inherited the great promise that we've been talking about like Joshua actually just recounted everything that God had done here's why he, all he was doing was he was putting courage inside of this nation he was saying let me tell you what God has done for me and can I tell you one of the most beautiful things you can do in discipling your home and laying your life down for your home when you're spending it with your spouse or your kids or, 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 or whoever you count as a part of your home, one of the best things you can do is just talk about the things that God has done for you. Man, as I, I, my mom is rock star when it came to helping me understand what it means to follow God. And I got to tell you, it, it wasn't like Bible studies every single day. She, she didn't make like force me to read certain things like I, for a long time. I just read the Bible when I was grounded because I had nothing else to do. But she used to just tell me stories of how God rescued and how God was faithful and what God had done. And those stories stick and you carry them and you remember and you hear about how good God is. Man, what if this season where you're home more than you're not is a season of stories? It's a season of, hey, 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 kids, did I tell you about the one time that God? Hey, hey, did I tell you the one time when we didn't have enough finances, but God pulled through? Hey, can I share the story of how God has been faithful to me and how God will be faithful to our house? And I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for our church and the city. And, um, <clears throat> and then we'll close out. But God, I thank you. I thank you for what you're saying. I thank you for what you're speaking. I thank you for your word. And Lord, I just pray that there'd be sincerity and faithfulness that comes out of this moment in this season. And God, I know that there is a million things we probably could do want to do or should do better but god i just want to simplify in this season and god we're grateful for seasons like this although although um you don't cause them you're in them and so i'm grateful for for seasons like this to be able to say hey let's let's just breathe for a second what would it look like to simplify what would it look like to be sincere what would it look like to be faithful what would it look like to apologize what would it look like to reprioritize? What would it look like to set something up that when we come out of this season, we'd be better for it in the next season? God, what does it look like to not allow the world to dictate and school what our home is going to look like? But God, we will allow your word to dictate and school what our home is going to look like. God, I pray that we'd be able to lean into what you're, you're schooling in the home and not just in the public and help us to learn, help us to grow, help us to lean into those things. And God, anybody that wants to make a decision to follow Jesus, if that's you, I, it's simple. It's saying, God, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, maybe quarantine's been overwhelming. Maybe quarantine's been frustrating. I don't know what it's been for you, but you can just, in this moment, you're saying, I've come to an end of myself. And just say, Jesus, just, just cry out, just a prayer to him. Say, Jesus, I'm done. I repent, which means I turn from my ways. And I made a decision to choose your ways. If Joshua is saying that as for him and his house, he will serve the Lord today, I'm choosing that I will serve you, that you can be the Lord of my life, that you don't just save me, but that you get to direct me. And God, I choose to lay down my life. I thank you that you've forgiven my sin and that your word says it's I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, that I've been made a new creation 
And let me walk that out this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, we want to connect with you. So if you made that decision today, we want to connect with you. You can, you can text us, GLC Decided, to 97000. And uh, we, we, our team would love to be able to connect with you and just kind of help you with next steps and get you in part of a family and a community for you to belong to. Uh, and church family, come on, let's go be, uh, let's, let, let's go love this city. Let's go care for people. Uh, and let's, let's really care for our home. Let's take care of what matters right there. It might be the hardest at home, but it's the most rewarding. And so we love you guys. We'll see you next week for Church Online. Hey, thank you for watching our Grow Life Church YouTube channel. Our hope is always to help you better connect to all that God has for you. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing. Fill out a digital connect card so that we can stay connected with everything that's happening in and through our community. You can also support the mission by giving online as we continue to bring people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Thank you again for watching. We hope to see you soon.